All right, guys, so I want to do a video going over the Leandro cut. It's a really famous pass, but I see I haven't seen anywhere online people show the key details to make it work. So I break it down into two versions. There's the version where the guy has your collar and pulls hard, and then there's like the fast version. And we're going to go through both. Before I get into the video, if you guys like the content, click the bell button so you get notifications. Also, like, share, and subscribe. All right, so the first version of this cut is gonna be, uh, the guys will just say he has my pant leg. It doesn't really matter. He can have the ankle or the pant leg. You can do it against either one, it doesn't matter. But for now, we'll just have the pant. Um, so the first version is I'm gonna trap the leg and he's gonna grab this cross collar grip really high. This is a classic version you see Leandro do a lot. I'm gonna show this first and then I'm gonna go into the really fast version, which is also really good. Okay, so a few key things with this. Um, the strength of this cut, you can come around this side. The strength of this cut is a lot of people classically grab the lapel when they cut from De La Hiva. The difficulty with this, it's not wrong, it's just a different system, but is when I grab the lapel, this guy's leg can now lasso, right? But if I stay on the leg right until I cut, there's no chance of the lasso. Because as he's trying to lasso your leg now, my hand is killing it, right? So I'm gonna open and I hit the cut immediately and there's no chance for the lasso to actually happen in that case, right? That's one of the big strengths of this. As well as most people have never felt this cut before, so it's very, very strong. Okay, so we're gonna talk about a few key factors to making this work. The first thing we'll talk about what my right knee is gonna do. My right knee, it can vary depending on how he's responding. Turn this way a little bit. It can vary a little bit depending on how he's responding, but my right knee, I wanna aim to shoot up towards his chest or maybe even the armpit area. I wanna be lifting my right foot off the floor when I go. Okay, I'm lifting it off the floor and it's shooting like this. It's really hard to show because it's like a one motion, right? So it's like trying to jump in slow motion. So I'm just leaving my hands here now to show. So I'm lifting my right foot and I'm shooting my knee through the air, okay? Once I get past a certain point, it may, it's easier to turn his hip over towards the side I'm passing, okay? What I don't want is for his hip to stay on this side, right? So what I'm gonna do is I keep my right hand on the uh, De La Hiva leg, killing it. I'm gonna use my left hand to open this. He would be on the collar for right now, he's not, just so you can see the, the grips. I'm gonna cup the knee. What I wanna do is step out to the side a little bit. I open the knee. You can keep it like heavy that way a little bit uh, with the knee, yeah. I open the knee like this, and I'm gonna lift my right foot in the air. Okay, turn this way a little bit. Okay, watch my right foot. See, I'm lifting it in the air. This helps snap his leg center. What I want when I go, is see how I hook this arm? I wanna have him pulled into me because a lot of people will complain that the guy's holding their pant leg so they feel like they're getting stuck on this side. But that's because they didn't get the guy centered and pulled in. I wanna catch this arm and pull it in because now when he tries to turn back to the other side, to, see, I'm pulling him into me and keeping him tight and now I can work to finish, right? So I wanna make sure that I'm pulling this into me. A lot of people make the mistake when they're doing this cut of trying to post their right hand on the floor. So when they go, it looks like this. Sometimes I can even hurt your own arm, but when he tries to pull back this way, I don't have any counter force to rip him back to the side, right? So that's why I'm trying to catch that underhook, right? So there's a lot of details to make this thing work, so I'm just gonna go through all of it, right? So I'm here, maybe he has the daily heave hook in first, I kill it, I trap the leg, I cup the knee, he's gonna be on the collar when I'm doing it, okay? I'm gonna pull this knee open and step out, and I kind of lighten my weight on this leg before I go to help snap him to the center. When I dig for the underhook, I wanna make sure, go ahead and let go of this real quick. I wanna make sure my right forearm goes along this line across his thigh, okay? A lot of people, what they do is maybe they do the underhook I just showed, but when they go, they're going on the outside. So as they go, they get hit with this shield. But when my right forearm tracks along, when I do it, I kind of pull back for a second and go here, and I turn my hand backwards, it tracks along the inside of the thigh. That's gonna deflect the shield from hitting, right? So as I go, it's like, that, you see? This deflects the shield, or at least makes it very difficult to get. And also notice my upper body rotates to the right, okay? So when I rotate here, this makes it harder for him to find my hip. It also keeps my chest weight heavier over him so that when I land, I'm chest to chest with the pass finish. If you go way out to the side here, like this, hold the pants again. If you go way out to the side here, you may even clear the position, go ahead and let go. Uh, but then I end up out here and now he's on his side and he can push and keep fighting, right? When the, when the cut hits perfect, like a really good one, you want to see this landing position chest over chest, right? Because now even if he pushes on me here, he's basically, just get your hands and like push on my chest or something, right? He's pushing himself back into the floor, right? Does that make sense? Like if, he, if I'm here and he's here and he's pushing, he's pushing himself away from me. So it's like I'm chasing him. Like put your hands to push me. It's like I'm chasing him as he pushes himself away and me away. 
But when I'm directly overhead with my chest, even if he pushes me, it's like he's pushing a, like a, uh, like the ceiling and it's coming down on him and I can find space to work my way in. So anytime you can, a really good clean pass, you always wanna get chest over chest. And that's what this pass does. It's like as you land it, you're just landing in a super dominant position. Okay, so we'll go again. So starting to pick up the speed on it. Like I said, there's a ton of details. It's a difficult pass, but it's so worth it when you get it down because you will just blitz through really good De La Hiva guards because they've never experienced this before, okay? So in the beginning, I'm not gonna get too much into the meta game of how to trap this leg, but to do it, I have to trap the leg first, okay? So maybe I'm here, I'm killing the De La Hiva leg. I don't wanna kill this too hard because I can lose my balance to the side. So I just wanna push this leg down just enough to get rid of it. If he's got the hook in, just a little bit there, just barely. I try to grab the foot if I can, push it towards the in between my legs and I start trapping. When I trap, I get my left knee behind his hamstring like this to give me balance. He's probably gonna be grabbing my collar as I do this in this first case, right? So he's gonna grab the collar, make sure when I'm bending over, one second, keep your neck up and your posture up, okay? If I'm like this, I, it looks relatively the same, but the difference in the balance he can break when I'm head down, grab here, and he pulls tight, it, it off balances me, right? When I'm here, go. See, I have a lot more balance. He doesn't have the same kind of grip. It's hard to see the difference, but it, you'll feel it immediately when you do it. Head up, okay? So I kill the De La Hiva leg, I trap here. Now maybe he shields this knee to prevent the cut. I balance out if I have to. I cup the knee like this. Keep the knee shielded more. Okay, uh, this way, yeah. I cup the knee here. Come, come up here and get like a good angle of this, right? I cup the thigh, I make sure I kill this. And look, I'm gonna step out to the left as I snap him open. My right arm tracks inside the thigh and I'm gonna underhook and catch that tricep, okay? As I rotate my upper body to the right and my knee shoots through that way, right? So it's there, boom. Once I land here, there's a lot of different details for finishing. Uh, if he just keeps holding the pants, keep holding the pants uh, from the underneath, yeah. If he keeps holding the pants here, I'm just gonna pull tight here. Uh, sometimes if the shield gets in a little bit, I'll go up high and clear my hip over his knee. Sometimes that'll break it, worst case, uh, I'll get my shoulder deep on his armpit and pressure here and I can break it. Sometimes, go ahead and grab the pant again. Sometimes once I'm in here, I'll go head down and get my shoulder into his jaw and go. That's another common mistake people make is they, uh, when they do the cut, they try to go head down. You really want your head up when you do this knee cut pass, okay? Uh, you can go head down later on when you're finishing, but if you try to go head down in like a fast cut like this, uh, for my knee to be heavy, I have to have posture. So if my head's down, my knee has no weight to clear through this gap. So he's gonna stay shielded, and it's like, I just keep hitting this wall I can't get through, right? So when I have my head up, so you grab the collar here, when I have my head up, my knee is really strong and heavy and it allows me to get through, okay? So make sure you're not dropping your head down there. Uh, sometimes here as well, I might be able to grab this arm and posture through and break here. Again, I'm not gonna go super in depth on the uh, finish mechanics because there's so many details to get this pass to actually work in the first place. So expect that when you guys start drilling and specific sparring with this, it is a tricky pass to figure out. Uh, it's not as simple as some of the other ones, but the payoff is really, really worth it because you just blitz through daily Hiva guards that normally are very, very difficult. Okay, so uh, those are the key details for the collar one. Uh, one more detail on that, and then I'm gonna go into the other uh, version. So go here. Another major thing to pay attention to it's like I kill this daily heave a leg, not too hard. I try to grab the foot. I try to trap it as he grabs the collar. Sometimes when I'm here, the big thing is if he's just kind of not pulling yet, he's kind of somewhere in between, he's just kind of holding it but not pulling or pushing much, then I really need to do all this stuff right and open and do everything I just showed. But sometimes when I get here, he starts to panic, right? Or another thing I like to do is while I'm here, sometimes I'll just try to pull this through and get it to the floor. If I get it to the floor, I can sit down and now I can knee cut, take my time. It's like quarter mount, okay? So what often happens is when you're here and you're trying to force this through, guys panic and they'll rip this collar really hard. And he literally pulls me into the cut. That's another excellent time to go for this pass is when the guy rips, right? So I might trap the leg and I'm kind of setting the position up and then he overreacts and rips the collar hard. Immediately you can hit the cut then. Uh, there's a great clip of Leandro doing this to uh, Mergali at the BGJ that tournament. I'll try to put that in here. <laughs> E eu chamo a atenção agora que o Leandro Lô está chegando por ali para ouvir o corner dele. E, e desde o início, né, quando terminou o tempo normal, o Beregal, a primeira coisa que ele fez foi ir até o Mário Reis para poder... Ok, so now let's look at the second variation of this. Which is, we're here, and now 
uh, the guy is going to be looking for uh, uh, my sleeve or something like that, and he's keeping his leg kind of back. People have two main responses here. They either rush to get their leg shielded when you trap, so it's harder to cut, or they keep it really out wide and open like this, okay? And when they keep it out wide and open like this, it can be a little bit harder to trap, and usually they're looking for your sleeve. So I'm kind of up here, he goes for my collar, I'm kind of up, and I'm just kind of monitoring this leg in this kind of a position, right? So I don't want to give them the sleeve. If they get the sleeve, I can't cut, they can do a lot of attacks, right? So what I'm doing is I'm kind of monitoring here and stuff, but the difference here is since he doesn't have my collar, I can hit with a lot more force. He doesn't have my posture, so I can do what I call the fast cut, okay? And what that'll look like is I'll be here, he starts looking for the sleeve here, and he's kind of difficult keeping this here, and I just go from there, okay? This one is probably my favorite. Uh, if you catch the guy in that game where he's chasing the sleeve, he's leaving you with a posture. All you have to do is angle that foot in between your leg. You don't even have to fully trap it. You don't have to like sit trap it, take your time. It's just like I see it out there and I just like angle it. See, I can see here if I lunge, it's gonna go in between the legs, right? I can tell I'm gonna make it, right? So I'm just here playing with this, I, I angle it and I'm just gonna lunge for that underhook and launch my knee through the air. It takes really good timing, but if you get good at it, it's super dangerous, right? So I'm here like this, I just catch this timing right there. See, I just kind of angle it. I'm gonna lunge for the same underhook I showed before. I shoot my knee through the air and I hit right there, okay? This one is super shocking. It's really good when they mess with your sleeve, when they go for the low lapel grips, and it's very fast, okay? Having both of those in your arsenal is super, super dangerous for your De La Hiva guard. Of course, uh, de passing De La Hiva guard, knee cut is not the only option. So in reality, you wanna have a complete De La Hiva passing system. It should involve the knee cut. It should also involve leg drags, reverse leg drags, stuffing the leg. There's a lot of different systems in there. So this is not gonna exist in isolation. But there's so many details to this knee cut. That's why I feel like a, an entire video on how to do it is very important. Because like a lot of those little details, like the underhook, tracking on the inside of the thigh, keeping your posture up, how to angle your knee, all that stuff is critical, okay? Um, so I'll probably do another video on De La Hiva passing uh, system as a whole, uh, as well as I also might do a video more on like the classic, uh, like I just call it the Lapri style knee cut, which is like where you grab the lapel and cut that way. It has a very different mechanic, okay? All right, guys, so um, if you like the content, uh, please subscribe. If you guys have any questions about the technique or future requests, please let us know. Look out for some more videos in the future with uh, Tommy, Espen, Regard, and some live streams. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Cool.